For the following exercises, find the domain of each function using interval notation, an inequality, and a number line, all right, if possible. So let's just take a look at the first function here. All right. In finding the domain, we have to find are there any restrictions on the x value. Now we realize that there's two important restrictions going on here. Okay, number one, we have a square root here. Okay, and we know that, as I noted down here at the bottom, that you can only basically take the square root of a positive answer, okay, of a positive value. That being the case, right, restriction, the first restriction here is going to be that whatever is under the radical here, namely x minus 3, all right, must be greater than or equal to 0. Either it's going to be 0 or greater. You can take a value, you can take the square root of, of 0, and you can also take a, a, the square root of any uh, positive value you want. So this would be the appropriate way to set up that first limitation. Now the second thing is also now expanding or moving, taking a step back, we also realize that whatever is in the denominator in totality cannot be equal to zero, right? You cannot take five and divide it by zero. That is impossible. So I know that whatever this whole denominator now is equal to, it can't be equal to zero. So in other words, what I'm saying is that the square root and I'll write a little line here, the square root of x minus 3 cannot equal 0. Right? These are the restrictions. So basically, I'm going to look at each restriction independently and then combine them at the end All right, into a, into a, a number line. So what? how would you solve for x in this case? It's simple, right? You just add 3 on over to the right-hand side, and we realize that x must be greater than or equal to 3. Right? That's one of our restrictions. Okay, the other thing now is how do we solve this? Well, you can pretend that the, you know, just treat this as if it said equal to. If you were to do it that way, you'd say, well, I got to solve for x, so I got to get rid of the square root. Oh, right, I have to square both sides first, right? So square that side, you square 0, and obviously we get x minus 3 equaling 0, okay? So now when we solve for x, we realize here that x well, not equaling zero, I should have said not equal to zero, right? Because I'm just using, keeping the same uh, uh, notation here. So then x cannot equal three, right? Because I'm just gonna add now the three on over to the right-hand side, just as if I was solving something. So there are two important restrictions. This one says that x can, uh, can be greater than or equal to three. And then this one says x cannot be three. So one does not necessarily supersede the other. You have to take both of them into account. So basically, x we know cannot be 3. And this one's saying that x can be equal than, uh, excuse me, greater than or equal to 3. So now when I create my number line, all right, now when I create my number line, here we're going to go all the way out from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Let's put the value of 0 here, and the other important value is going to be 3. Okay. We know, based on this restriction, that it cannot be equal to 3. And therefore, when I locate my 3 here, I have to have an open circle. Okay. Now, even though this says x can be equal to, uh, excuse me, greater than or equal to, this restriction tells me it cannot be equal to. All right? And therefore, I have to keep this circle open. But now I can shade anywhere to the right, because the this restriction told me that it can be anything greater than uh, or equal to 3. Right. So this is my number line. Now this is fairly simple then trying to put this into interval notation, right? There's only one little piece here, meaning that it's it can go anywhere from three all the way to infinity, exclusive of both. You cannot include three, that's why there's a parenthesis there, and you cannot include infinity because infinity is not a real number. All right, so this is the appropriate interval, and then we can do an inequality here by saying, 3 will be less than x, which will be less than infinity. All right, you basically just shove the x in between, in between these two pieces here. All right, and this would then be your inequality. So let's try to now move through the next example. All right, notice there's an x in both the numerator here and the denominator. There is no limitation for x being in the numerator here. All right, no restriction. The restriction lies here in the denominator. Two problems again, right? Under the radical, it cannot equal 0. And this whole denominator cannot equal 0. So I'm going to show both. That 5 minus x, which is the item that lives under the radical, 
cannot equal, excuse me, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. I might have said if I said that this cannot equal zero, I was mistaken. What I meant to say was what's under the radical here must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, that's the first restriction. And then we have the overall restriction on the denominator that this radical five minus x cannot equal zero. Okay, it's very similar to how this was set up. So we're literally gonna solve it the same way, all right? So now we realize that we are going to subtract the five on over if we like, so we're gonna have negative x is greater than or equal to negative five. Now be careful here, you have to find what x is, meaning you have to divide out negative one. Now whenever you divide a negative number across an inequality, you must flip the sign of the inequality, okay? So now what's going to happen is it's going to be x will be less than or equal to five. Why? Because again, it was negative five divided by negative one. That's easy. That's obviously a positive answer. But whenever you're dividing across an inequality by a negative number, you always got to flip this sign. Okay. So now here is one limitation. The second limitation, again, we know how to solve this now. Take the square or square both sides. So now you're going to have five minus x does not equal zero. Solving this for x, you can just bring the x on over. It doesn't really matter. We realize that x cannot equal five, all right? So again, we have a very similar scenario here to what we dealt with before. If I were to now create my number line, okay? If I were to now create my number line, negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, here's the zero, and the other important point will be located at five. We know five cannot, x, I should say, cannot equal 5. So therefore, this has to be an open circle. But we also know that x can be less than or equal to 5, right? But it can't include 5 now because of this additional restriction. So now when I shade my graph, I'm going to shade it to the less than location. And now this is easy to think about the interval here, right? It goes anywhere from negative infinity, and that's definitely an 8 this time, <laughs> negative infinity all the way to 5, exclusive of both. Okay, not including five and not including negative infinity because negative infinity is just an idea. It's not a real number. Then when I create the inequality, right, it's just going to be from negative infinity, less than x, less than five. All right, just shove the x in between these two. So that takes care of the second one. And finally, the last one, right, so this was actually, let me, I should be writing these steps. This was part two where I was creating the... Uh, writing the domains. So now I realize here, oh boy, right? So treat this as, remember, think about each restriction independently. Even though this looks a lot harder, if you break it down into its individual components, it's really kind of easy, okay? So first thing is we know there's always a restriction whenever you're dealing with a square root, okay? What's ever under this square root has to be zero or greater than zero, right? Meaning greater than or equal to zero. So the first thing is I'm going to deal with this first restriction on the top. I know that for that um, figure, x minus 4, under the radical, under that radical at, at the top, better be greater than or equal to 0. That's one restriction. Okay. Now similarly, I also have another radical in the denominator. And therefore, I'm going to also set x minus 6 greater than or equal to 0. Because what's ever under this radical has to be 0 or positive. Right? It has to be greater than 0 greater than or equal to zero. And then I also realize that this entire denominator, because I have the variable there, this whole denominator cannot equal zero. So now I'm gonna write the x, the square root of x minus six cannot equal zero. So I just have three restrictions, don't worry. It, it seems like it's more complicated, but if you look at it in the individual pieces, it's not bad, right? Solve this baby for x, just add the four on over. So we realize that x uh, has to be greater than or equal to four. Okay, that's one limitation. Doing the same thing in the on the second case, we realize that x has to be greater than or equal to six. So that's the other limitation. Okay, and then also solving this one out, we square both sides, right? And we realize x minus six cannot equal zero. So we're saying that x cannot equal zero. Uh, excuse me, x cannot equal positive six. All right, when we solve that. Okay. Notice you should be noticing a pattern here with these some of these values. All right. I'm not going to state it. I want you to think about what the pattern is. So now, what we can do is create our number line. So create the number line. Okay, let's go all the way out. 
So we're going to go from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Let's put the mark of a zero. Now we realize we have two important locations. We're talking about four here. So actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move the zero over here. So I know we're talking about four and we're talking about six. So I'm going to plug in six here. Okay. Let's first go to, let's first go to this one, right? So it says X can be greater than uh, or equal to four. Okay. So what you can do is you can lightly fill this in. Just dot, just fill in the four and then lightly shade this way. Okay. Now we also know that this restriction is telling us that X must be greater than or equal to six. Now here's the thing. When you think about these two, we're also saying that now this restriction is saying that X can be greater than or equal to six. So we can fill this in, right? And then we can shade this way, all right? And then we also realize that, wait a minute, this says that X cannot equal six. So just go back one step, open this up, open that circle up, and you can still fill on out to the right, okay? Now, if you plug in just like I did, all of the restrictions on your number line, okay? It's very easy to tell now what the domain of this is. Wherever your lines, wherever your shades overlap, exactly how they overlap will be your domain, overall domain, okay? This is telling us X can be greater than four, but this one is telling us X must be greater than six, right? Greater than or equal to six. Essentially, this one kind of supersedes this, but it's easier, I think, if you draw it all out on the number line and then just take a look at what overlaps, okay? So X cannot equal six, and it's anything greater than that, all right? So writing that now on out in interval notation, it would be six, not including it, and it goes all the way out to infinity, not including that. Another way to write this out would have been then using the inequality, which is six, would be less than X, which is less than infinity. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, all right? I hope this video helped. Please help us out, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Have a great day.